Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part four of working with Booleans in the operators and methods section. And now we're going to take a look at a situation where we want a combination of the two previous operators that we have engaged in or engaged with. So we've talked about or and we've talked about and. So you want to picture that any time that we combine two of those, and I'll give you an example. When we compared these two Boolean variables, we got a result that is also a Boolean. So what we could do at that point is combine that result with something else. And that's actually what we're going to do. Now, it's a little bit tricky to just start writing out all the combinations of this because they spiral rather quickly. So let's go ahead and start with our real world example. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this, move it over here, and look at what's going on. So we have three variables. Store is open, is hungry, and is thirsty. So will go to the store is going to be true in the event that the store is open, meaning this variable has to be true, and either is hungry or is thirsty. You want to figure that if we are neither hungry nor thirsty, then we don't really need to go to the store. If the store isn't open, then we don't need to go to the store, which is why these two Boolean expressions, this one and this combination one, are linked by an and. The issue becomes, if the store is open and we're only hungry, then we probably still want to go to the store. And the same thing for if the store is open and we're only thirsty. Now, if the store is open, we're hungry and we're thirsty, then we're obviously going to the shop. So, or sorry, the store. So if we run this, we're gonna say a little quick personal affirmation while the code is running, because if it can run, so can you. Um, well, if it can run, so if it can work, so can you, something like that. Anyway, let's go ahead and change this to where the store is not open, but we are hungry and we are thirsty, which means that we are probably going to have to deal with whatever food is at home or just wait until the store opens, meaning that we will not go to the store, so this is going to be false. Excellent. Now let's change this to say that the store is open, but let's say that we are not hungry, we're just thirsty. Now in this case, this expression here is going to evaluate to true because one of them is true, and then the store is open and at least one of these is true, meaning that we are going to go to the store. Uh, however, I think I lost track of what we were exactly doing. We already did the store is closed. This one we're going to do the store is open, but we are neither thirsty nor hungry, meaning that we're not going to go to the store because it's great that the store is open, but if we're not hungry or thirsty, then we don't really need anything at this store. Assuming, of course, that it only sells food and uh, beverages. Okay, so excuse me. now that we have all of that sorted out, we're going to complete a coding challenge called a combination of Booleans. Again, we're going to start by reading the entire problem out loud because essentially from this point on in the course, you can follow what I'm doing for almost every single problem and get at least in striking distance of the answer. And if not, provide yourself a nice basis from which to be taught what the answer would be. So we're going to complete a function that takes in three Boolean parameters, bool1, bool2, bool3. Your function should create a variable and assign it to the result of the following bool1 and either bool2 or bool3, which, if you're paying attention, is the example we just went over. The lower example of the code running, assuming that you will have completed the described function combination. Okay, let's go ahead and copy the function stub. We're going to leave this commented out at the top just as a reference, and we'll put that there. Then we're going to copy these test cases. Combination bool1, bool2, bool3, and here are a couple of various, uh, you know, if true, true, and false, then the output's going to be true. And if false, true, and true, the output is going to be false. There are obviously several more combinations that we could give, and it might be a fun idea to try to figure out how many possible combinations are there, given that we have this uh, organization, bool1 and either bool2 or bool3. So if you feel like messing with that, cool. If not, also cool. Create a result variable. Assign it to bool1 and either bool2 or bool3. So what I'm going to do then is just create my result variable, say bool1 and, and then I'm going to wrap either bool2 or bool3. So bool2, swing and a miss, or bool3. Now that we've done that, result is going to contain the answer to our question, so we'll just return result. If we hit run, we're going to hang out for a little bit while the code gets up to speed. And the output for should be true, should be true, should be false, should be false. Excellent work. Let's go ahead and copy this function and put it back into the input window. I know you guessed it because we were about to be in good shape. Excellent work, everybody. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.